Institute, you guys have been really supportive and really, really lovely and encouraging. But to everybody else, for all of your honesty and your courage for stepping up here and just giving all, because I've learned so much from every single one of you and it's just been really, really good. I just wanted to say being out of the workforce for six years, looking after little kids and this is the first course I've ever done. And it was astounding, it blew my mind, it was beyond my expectations. And thank you, Kate, for the feedback today. That was brilliant. And it's given me the confidence to back myself because I didn't have that before. Because, you know, when you leave for a while and you come back, it's all a bit dodgy. So thank you. Sam, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That has been absolutely awesome. I've learned a hell of a lot today. And I really feel like we're all improving. So thank you so much. It's been oh, really awesome. I wish everyone all the best on this on the course. I think it was a wonderful course. And Sam, you've created a, a, an amazing business. But I also want to congratulate the people you've got working underneath you because it wouldn't be that great if you didn't have all this wonderful resource. And I congratulate them for supporting you. It's excellent. I'd actually just like to thank Sam and the team so much for everything you've done. But I'd really like to thank everybody else. I have learned so much from all of you. It's just been so exhilarating. I'm so excited for each and every one of you because it's just the growth in such a short space of time has been phenomenal. So thank you all very, very much. So I want to say, look, I've forever been doing courses and programs. I've probably spent over $350,000 in my life. Um, this was worth every cent. I'm very, very impressed with the level of knowledge of the coaches. Um, and they just kept offering gold nugget after gold nugget. Um, definitely was worth every minute as well, so thanks. Hi guys, I just wanted to say uh, my work relies on face-to-face -face, uh, workshops, speaking at conferences around the world. So investing in this course is really about looking to the future. So it's really an investment in the long term. It's been a really, really professionally put together course. So commendations all round to all of you. From the age of nine years old, I have been fascinated with success. The day I left school, I could not read, spell or write. I had no idea what I wanted to be or could be. All I did know was I had a burning desire to create success. I just didn't know where to start or how to achieve it. My only option was to get a job at McDonald's. For 18 years, my desired success mission was to own my own, for me to achieve to be an outstanding performer, well dollars, debt free. I achieved my desired success mission three years ago. I currently own two McDonald's stores that produce over $8 million in revenue per annum. For many years, I have had a deep sense that my story, message and knowledge was meant to be heard by more than just the people within my life. I knew I had to find the right person to help me achieve this mission. Sam showed me the power of stories, the ability to be more vulnerable, and most of all, how to systemize 20 years of leadership, business, and success knowledge. If you have a story, message, or knowledge that you want to share and add value to people, Sam is your man. Hey guys, Sam Cawthorn here, CEO and founder of Speakers TV. Lean in where you can, give us any level of feedback, and we are really excited about your success. And don't forget, the best is yet to come. I saw a need in terms of my presentation skills. I wasn't a, I was confident just chatting to a, you know, a small group of people, but the concept of being on a stage and talking to a, a bigger group of people scared me, no end, always had. A friend of mine who I value um, her endorsement of things actually just liked this one day free event um, by Sam Cawthorn and the Speakers Institute. So I thought, oh, there's something there. I'd launched my own business, it was free, why not head along? <laughs>
and that was a weekend that really really changed me. I actually I spoke on stage for the first time sharing my six minute story. It actually felt it wasn't as intimidating as I as I thought it would be because it was about me speaking from my heart and sharing my story. It felt good and there was a lot of coaching and guidance along the way and the connection I felt with the audience was a, a big part of that. It wasn't about me, it was how I could see people being moved and I felt compelled and inspired to do more of that. Life now is, uh, I've progressed um, on a number of fronts. I'm now a professional speaker and a marketing energizer. So the journey I went on with the Speakers Institute over 18 months was very much personal development as well as professional development and it helped me tap into and articulate what that message is within me. And now I feel just so passionate about sharing that through writing. I've actually finished the first draft of my book. So life's, life's progressed in a number of ways, um, in a really, really good way. And I guess all of that was probably in me, but the guidance and the coaching and the encouragement along the way. And the team at Speakers Institute has played a big part in that. Welcome to Speakers TV. My name is Sam Cawthorn, CEO and founder of both Speakers Institute, Speakers Tribe, as well as also here, Speakers TV. And my mission is to give you some of the best speakers in the world, the world's trends, who are the latest influencers, and bring them to you live in this episode. So here on Tuesday, wherever you are in the world, we wanted to thank you for tuning in, and please lean in where you can, write down notes, because I know that there is a reason why you've tuned in to today's episode here on this amazing Tuesday, wherever you are in the world, and certainly we believe that the best is yet to come. Clarity is power. Clarity is power. Do you know what makes you tick? Do you know what makes you shine? Do you know what makes you win in life? I started my journey with clarity a long, long time ago, unexpectedly. When I was born, Singapore had a two-child policy. I was unfortunately number three. <laughs> An accident, like my mom would say. So my mom gave me a Chinese name called Ting Ting, which actually means beautiful and graceful. However, in Mandarin, this word Ting also sounds like stop. So my mom was telling my dad, stop, stop, no more children. <laughs> I laugh about it now, but I dreaded it when I was young. I always had this question, who am I and why am I on this earth? But things became better when I came to my faith because someone shared with me, no, I was born on earth for a reason. In fact, he said, wonderfully and fearfully made. Wow, I got so excited. Could it be that all of us are born on this earth for a reason? And that began my quest for clarity. If you look at the etymology of the root word, thanks to Nick, of the word clarity, the root word is bright, radiance, glory, splendor. Do you, you had this bounce in your step. When you feel that brightness that shines from within, you feel that radiance coming out of you. That's when you have absolute clarity of who you are. Imagine having that the rest of your life. Now I know they say, ah Ruth, I don't believe in this clarity thing 
Mm. It's too fluffy and rainbow. Having clarity, gaining clarity, is not just an amazing feeling. In fact, clarity impacts every area of our life. Very simple example. If you are a mortgage to be debt free as soon as possible, when you see a shop that sells an exquisite couch, would you buy it? No. Because you have clarity, you make that decision in a split second. A lot of us waste time making decisions thinking we are doing due diligence, but I dare to say the first due diligence we need is clarity. Now, I learned clarity from ancient wisdom by Sun Tzu, who wrote that in the Art of War. For those who do not know Sun Tzu, he was a military strategist in China in 500 BC. Sun Tzu was tasked to lead the army to defeat an opponent that was 10 times larger than him. And he did. So he wrote down these strategies called the art of war. Zhi zi, zhi bi, bai zhan, bai shen. It actually means know yourself, know your opponent, a hundred battles, a hundred victories. Know yourself. All battles start when you know yourself, when you know your strengths, you know your weakness, half the battle is won because you can set effective strategies that work for you. Know your opponent. Your opponent doesn't mean your enemy. It means someone you're trying to influence. Knowing your opponent allows you to avoid what is strong and attack what is weak and win with minimal resources. A hundred battles, a hundred victories. That is where most people miss it. It is not that they do not have clarity. It is that they do not have a battle plan. We heard earlier today, Dale was saying, he planned out his entire day. He took action for what he wanted. And that is the key to absolute clarity. Now, one of my ways today, we're going to talk about knowing yourself. So obviously, as a Gallup Certified Strengths Coach, one of the ways that you will know yourself is to really understand your gifts and talents. So Gallup is a personality assessment that once you do it, you get your top five strengths and you can understand it and work with it. So today we'll focus on knowing yourself, finding your personal clarity. Any other clarity is the same process. All right, in a moment, not yet. So I believe a lot of us has, have done our Gallup's uh, strengths assessment, but just in case you haven't, we're going to have an exercise just to see what your strengths are. Okay, so in a moment, I'd like you to stand up. If what you see on the screen is what you always do, so put your things away so you're ready to stand up. All right, put your things away. Are you ready? Yes, awesome. First one, are you someone who connect the dots and think, believe that everything happens for a reason? Can I have you stand? Woohoo! Wow, it's almost everyone, which is true, because this particular strength is one of the top strengths in every one of our boot camp. It is called connectedness. Uh, connectedness are people who are able to connect the dots and go with the flow. A blind spot, however, people may think you're fluffy. All right, give yourself a round of applause and have a seat. Well done, have a seat. Next one, uh, you talk to people in elevators, airplanes, and wherever you go, can have you stand? Well done. You're likely to have a strength called communication, which means you're a very good storyteller, but people may perceive that you talk too much. Give yourself a round of applause and have a seat. Well done. Are you someone, this is what I envy, do you have a color code that a very, very organized person? Can I have you stand? Well done. You're likely to have a strength called maximizer. You bring things good 
too great. However, your blind spot is people may think you are a bit fussy and hard to please. <laughs> Have a seat. All right, last one. Are you someone who loves to push the elevator button to remind them you are there? Can I have you stand? Come on. I'll be standing. Come on. Well done. This is a strength called activator. You're someone who loves to roll up your sleeve, a self-starter and a pioneer. However, people may find you a little bit impatient. Give us a round of applause and have a seat. So do you notice not everyone stood up at every question? Yeah, that is because Gallup shows that there is only 1 in 33 million chances of someone having the same strengths in the same order as you are. So we are all uniquely wired. So stop comparing. Stop looking to the left. Stop looking to the right because clarity comes from within. So how do we find clarity from within? It is hard, isn't it? Nowadays, with social media, we love to compare. Oh, this person's life is so good. Look at mine. Or we can't even decide. Wow, should I do what this person does? Or should I do what that person does? My encouragement to you is, if you want to reach higher, do you want to reach higher? Yes. You've got to dig deeper. Stop comparing and work with your strengths with what you have. Now, I have three very simple steps to finding clarity within. It's so simple, you may be very surprised. So, clarity, by definition in, in the dictionary, means clearness, ability and easy to see, to hear, and to understand. So, the first step is see. All right, see is simple, but it may not be easy because I have, you have to have perfect vision. So we're going to do test your vision now. Can everybody raise up your left hand? Left hand, bring it down and cover your left eye. All right. Say yes if you can see the first row. Yes. Say yes if you can see the second row. Yes. Say yes if you can see the last row. Yes. I don't believe. In a moment, not yet, when I count to three, you're going to shout out what you see in the last row. One, two, three. Well done. High five your neighbor and say, you look good too. <laughs> Strength and seeing is about picking up the mirror, looking past your blemishes and seeing your beauty. That's what we coaches do as well. We put that mirror into your face and sometimes we may point out a little bit of blind spots you may have to address. Yeah? So strength is constantly choosing to see your beauty. You can. The second step now, the second step is hear. Hear what? Hear your mother-in-law? <laughs> hear your heart. Do you know that the word hear is hidden in your heart? Which means if you don't hear, you don't have a heart. Wow. So in a moment, I'm going to bring you through an exercise for you to actually hear your heart. All right, please grab pen and paper because we're going to go through a very quick exercise for you to hear your heart. We talk about vision. And a lot of us, may, some of us may struggle with vision, but I do believe vision comes from our heart, from what we hear. Remember Lisa said she was driving, she heard a voice, and she followed that voice, and she achieved that greatness she had. That's what we are going to do now. So to do this exercise, you need to do it really, really quickly because you need to shut down the brain that reasons you out of it. I firmly believe a lot of us have clarity, but because we reason ourselves out of it due to fear or limiting beliefs. So in a moment, I'll bring you through this exercise. I'm going to show some words on the screen. I need you to write the words that's on the screen and I'll only give you 30 seconds for you to complete that sentence. Get it? So 30 seconds to write the sentence and complete it. Because I want you to do so quickly that you're not thinking. Just follow what you hear in your heart. All right? There's going to be two sentences. Are you ready? Okay, let's take a deep breath first. Hold it and out. 
Let's take a deep breath. All right, trust your heart. Let's go. It is, is 2021, 1st of March. Next year, this time, I am so excited because right, write it down. Paper. It is 2021. Who are you with? Where were you? Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Look up. Look up. All right. Okay, we're going to go to the second sentence now. Like I said, it's really fast. You just have to keep writing without thinking. All right? Trust your heart. Push past the doubts and trust your heart. Okay, second sentence now. Let's go. When I look back over the last year, the three biggest choices I had to make were, write these down now. When I look back over the last year, the three biggest choices I had to make were, right, choice number one, what was the first biggest choice you had to make? Wrap it up. What was the second biggest choices you had to make? Wrap it up. What was the third biggest choice you had to make? Five, four, three, two, one, stop, look up. How do you feel? <laughs> feel good? Did any of you, did what you wrote su surprise you? Okay, this exercise literally sort of changed my life. In 2018, I did this exercise myself. At that point of time, Speakers Institute was not even in Singapore. I wrote on March 3rd, 2019, I am so excited because I'm walking on stage to share with people that they can be who God wants them to be. And that for those who came last year, that was exactly what I did. So don't un underestimate what you did. Was it tough? <laughs> was it tough? Sometimes I had to really look back at the choices and stick with it. That leads us to the third point, you've got to move. Move. Clarity requires movement. Let me ask you, in the natural, far away, and it looks really blur, what do you do? You walk towards it, right? So is it with staying back and waiting for clarity to come. But we need to move and walk towards it. I know that there's a lot of teachings that say, you know, you need to find your purpose before you move. But I, mean, I firmly believe your foes as you move, as you follow your Tom clearer with the land. Who decides? Yes, you decide. You wear that lens, you go out, you move, you test it out. If it doesn't work, you go back to the optometrist and have a check again, right? But a lot of us are stuck here for a very long time. So what do you do if you are stuck? Very simple. All you need to do is to take a step back and kick your butt. <laughs> If you need, I can help you. <laughs> Moving, the first few steps can be uncomfortable because growing, stretching is not comfortable, isn't it? But as you move, you realize, hey, it's quite fun. I get to design my own clarity. And when you get momentum, you realize, hey, I can dance my way into clarity. Everybody say, see, see. See your beauty. Let your strengths enable you. Everybody say, hear. Hear. hear your heart. Let your vision guide you. Everybody say, move. move. Take the first step and let your action direct you. It's very simple. You may say, Ruth, it is so simple, but it's not with my life. You, what I've got, 
Let me share with you a story. I first met Siu Mei two years ago, and I was immediately blown away by her. You see, Siu Mei had cerebral palsy, which means her speech is slurred and her actions are limited. She came up to me and she spoke in a slur. I almost couldn't understand her. This is Siu Mei. But when she passed me her book and told me her vision, I was very impressed. Let's have a look at Siu Mei introducing herself and then you will know what I mean. Hi, my name is Yumi. I need what right. Oh, my but um, I think I'm beautiful. <laughs> Let's give Sumi a round of applause. <laughs> Sumi grew up with people avoiding her. People literally called her an alien. She did not wallow in self-pity, but instead, she decided to write the book and tell others her life so that people around her can accept people with conditions like her. You know, nowadays, we have a lot of published, we, we do a lot of self-publishing, correct? Do you know what's the average number of books sold per self-publisher? Hello. 250. Check it out. The average sales is 250. You may sold. Oh, I heard 10,000. Not only that, Siu Mei spoke in companies like Google, JP Morgan, Prudential. She also spoke in schools, appeared on no national TV and on newspaper. Siu Mei saw her beauty. She didn't have much, but she worked with what she's got. Siu Mei heard her heart, but most importantly, she defied all odds. She took action. She moved and ran her race. I don't know why you're here today, and I don't know what's holding you back from your clarity. Perhaps you know you are different, but you ask yourself, do I have anything to offer? I'm here to share with you, just like Siume, you do. It really doesn't matter if you believe in God, the Creator, or not. Because I stand here as a professional, as a Gallup certified strengths coach, to share with you this truth that you are fearfully and made, are uniquely wired for greatness. Free yourself. Free yourself from expectations. Free yourself from comparing others. If you are looking for that brightness, that radiance, that glory, that splendor. Can I encourage you just to take that first step? Move past your doubts and step into your destiny. Because clarity is power. And that power is you. I want to acknowledge you about is investing in yourself and ultimately spending time in online education. If you can learn how you can influence more powerfully through video, 
if you can learn how to create like your online virtual product and even make money online right now, then I'd love to help you uh, through that journey as well. To all the staff from Speakers Institute, you guys have been really supportive and really, really lovely and encouraging. But to everybody else, for all of your honesty and your courage for stepping up here and just giving all because I've learned so much from every single one of you and it's just been really, really good. I just wanted to say being out of the workforce for six years, looking after little kids and this is the first course I've ever done and it was astounding, it blew my mind, it was beyond my expectations and thank you Kate for the feedback today, that was brilliant and it's given me the confidence to back myself because I didn't have that before because you know when you leave for a while and you So thank you. Sam, thank you. Thank you. That has been absolutely awesome. I've learned a hell of a lot today. And I really feel like we're all improving. So thank you so much. It's been oh, really awesome. I researched on this wonderful course. And Sam, you've created a, a, an amazing business. I want to congratulate the people you've got working underneath you because it wouldn't be that great if you didn't have all this wonderful resource. And I congratulate them for supporting you. It's excellent. I'd actually just like to thank Sam and the team so much for everything you've done. But I'd really like to thank everybody else. I have learned so much from all of you. It's just been so exhilarating. I'm so excited for each and every one of you because it's just the growth in such a short space of time has been phenomenal. So thank you all very, very much. So I want to say, look, I've forever been doing courses and programs. I've probably spent over $350,000 in my life. Um, this was worth every cent. I'm very, very, very impressed with the level of knowledge of the coaches. Um, and they just kept offering gold nugget after gold nugget. Definitely was worth it. So thanks. I got my work realised that. Uh, workshops around the world so investing in this course is really about looking to really an investment real to get the course so commendations all around to all of you most amazing in a lifetime the coaches were phenomenal and I found the, the process that they follow and the material that they have presented was excellent practical tips to really improve the performance. It has shown me new ways to look at how I approach what I'm saying, how to say it, and how to engage the audience. You know, it's just amazing the amount of information I've received from the coaches, the support that I've got from everyone, the friends that I've made here. It is nothing like what I have imagined. I was absolutely hopeless when we started the course uh, and the, the process that you go through is absolutely amazing. I learned how to structure for my training, my workshops, what I'll be doing from now on. Now just to tell you, I was 14 years old and left school because I didn't want to speak in front of the class. I leave here today overcoming that fear. It's given me my confidence back. It's enabled me to get up back up on stage. And you're going to become more powerful, clearer in your message, on point, and you're going to feel like you're part of a tribe. You can't miss it. This is a total investment in you and your future. And if you are considering coming along, do not hesitate. The transformation from day to day truly is incredible. If you're looking to get your message out, I highly recommend that you join Sam and the team for their boot camp. Powerful, spectacular. Incredible, awesome. Fantastic, amazing journey. You've got to come, you've got to be here. Try them, honestly, it'll change your life. Research shows that most of us living now will go on to live till the age of 93. I have been here at this boot camp with, along with 60 very beautiful people. I can tell you all 60 of them have seen their lives transformed. There are people on stage who have never been on stage and are giving presentations. People like me are becoming better presenters and speakers. So let's understand the difference between this investing and saving. I want to give you these four golden words. Repeat after me. Stop. Stop. Saving. saving. Start. Start.
इन्वेस्टिंग स्टॉप Start investing. You want friends to other people. You are very different to other financial planners, to other other advisors, etc., etc. I would urge anyone whenever you get an opportunity like this, just grab it with both your hands and connect with Simon Cawthon and the Speakers Institute. This is the Celebrity Authority Show. Please welcome your host. Sam Cawthorn. Hey, I'm excited today. We have Rachel Thompson in the studio. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you for having me. It's really lovely to be here. Uh, Rachel, you you are a performance um, expert and a creativity coach. Uh, tell us a little bit more about you know you, you're a performer. Is that right? That's right. Yes, I've been playing the the violin since I was eight years old. Wow. Mm. So you started last year. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> Plus a few. <laughs> Rach, I'd like to unpack a little bit more about obviously Woody and why that is. Before we do that, tell us a little story. In a very musical family in New Zealand, and when I was 18, I won a competition, and I uh, went to the States on a scholarship, and I studied in Philadelphia for four years. I played in Carnegie Hall with a group of students that were selected and we, we played there. We had a week in New York at that time. And one of the highlights was when I won a concerto competition in New Zealand. So I started off by really wanting to be that. I was so ambitious and I had big dreams. That is amazing. And mm. for New Zealand, whereabouts in New Zealand? Did Christchurch, yeah. poor battered Christchurch at the yeah, moment. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, and uh, and your parents obviously supported you in this in my your parents, entre- you know in your making a difference endeavors my parents were both musical they didn't have a lot of money but decided to that they wanted all their children to learn music my father was a sociology lecturer and my mother had done music and french at university one of the go to university and so she was always the one at home making us practice and it was it's staying focused and doing that discipline this every day and that's what b- built it up and I think even though we all played in the family certain people do have a, a an innate gift and I was fortunate that it was for me for music so yeah. I've always enjoyed performing and I love to I, I've had my own challenges with performing so there's a point where you get to where owns it could be performance anxiety or it could be some kind of political problem skills to get ahead there I wouldn't mind First of all, uh, you performing, so obviously Carnegie Hall, you travel the world. Do you have any specific highlights? Have you met any of the big artists? the stage with some people? Yeah. Okay. So I've... Shlomo's of New York contemporary. Andre Pacelli, he sang on stage when we were in New Zealand, and the conductor, Marcello Rota, I spent a week with him in Verona, and we've had some great times. <laughs> that is amazing. You know, we uh, uh, for, for you to come here and obviously just so Chris, what, what and also and you know, entrepreneur use your your chef, you know, to create something that gives you passion and purpose. Life, a mate. 
of jobs that are in 30 AI to break. AI. Come to creativity, is there is there an easy way to, to learn it or do you think everyone has it? I believe everyone has it. I think that there are some jobs that people are so busy that they don't get a chance to kind of get there and they're mm. so busy that they keep a lid on that part of themselves and maybe that's why they come home drained and exhausted because they haven't been able to feed what they, for the, what they could be doing. I think corporations could use, you know, t as a team building exercise, they could bring creativity into the workplace and maybe have lunchtime workshops or actually bring it into the uh, gender so that if you're working on a project in a corporation, you can workshop it creatively, all mm. of you in a room, and not have, be relaxed and fun about it so that you don't feel that if you make a mistake, it's a problem. Mm. Because as long as you, once you try to be perfect, you're not going to be creative. And for people out there that, you know, might have j just been in that standard nine to five and, and think that they've lost their, their creativity, what would you say to them? I would say try and do something different every day. So instead of going to work the same way every day, choose a different path. Or don't always eat at the same time or don't always dress the same way. Just you can do what you do. Breaking standard pattern. And mm -hmm. something. Well, I think it gives you other opportunities. For instance, use a landmark like a certain tree you pass in Hyde Park, and at that point, you have to come up with some new idea. Like you create a challenge for yourself, where you mm. think, okay, every time I pass that tree, I'm going to, I'm going to say a poem, or I'm going to <laughs> think of five ways I'm. Going to get more people alive and awake when you are creating. Is that right? Correct. Is that where our natural genius is birthed from in that moment of creativity? Not opening yourself up for any kind of information. It may not even come necessarily from within you. You might, might just kind of be inspired. Mm, that's amazing. And you, do you find that? Do you write your own music? As well, right? Also, transcribe music. So I'll hear music and I'll have to pick out the lines and, and write it down on music. I have got a Sibelius program I do that on. Uh, so I've like a wrote a song, but it's not great. So I'm not going to spend my time on that. I'd rather write words and stories and things like that. I love write, creative writing. And when it does come to performance, um, ha having that super performance, is, uh, you know. So, um, as, as an individual, is there another layer from that? There's a level of performance and there's a lot of amazing performers out there, but they're kind of locked into that position. Whereas if they could just lift their game a little, and I, for each person it's going to be different, then they can open up and become extraordinary, and I call that superlative performance. Superlative performance. What, what do you mean by that? It's when you, you go past super and you become like more than you ever dreamt you could be. And I've, I have got a, do you want to hear my four step formula I, I, for this? I would, I would <laughs> love it. Yeah, I'm sure people out there, they want to perform at their best level. Yeah. Teach us how to do it. Okay, so I have four steps. The four steps to elite performance. And the first one is essence. It's really finding out your true value, which, you know, you could be a great player, have played for 20 years in front of audiences. Mm. But you actually are insecure inside. You need to be very solid and strong and know your real value. And that if you stop doing that, you would lose your passion and your purpose. And a lot of people would miss out because you're using that to be of service Great. to other people. Great. So that's your essence. essence. Number two is enthusiasm, which <laughs> you love to talk about, and it's about obsession. Enthusiasts in the 16th century, I think they were Protestants, they were almost fanatical. So it's kind of a fanaticism, and it comes from the word enthusios, which means obsessed wow. by God, or, or filled by God, possessed. Wow. And so if you can be really enthusiastic and obsessive about your passion, and you become committed to practicing, rehearsing, coming up with content, 
you know, learning, collating stuff and memorizing. I love it. And you're a performer, so you're reaching your audience, mm. you're connecting. So actually, performers become bigger on stage, their aura increases. And you want to meet the audience with your aura, so you're expanding your persona and there's steps it. to do that. Yeah. And the final one is effortlessness. When you get to a stage of ease where you're playing and you're, you're um, on automatic or you're speaking and you really, you're able to think what's going on in the room because the words are coming through you, you have reached a point of mastery that is effortless. So we want to get a point of effortlessness. Wow, that was mm. really inspiring. And, and I also love how you just shone when you were sharing that with us. So thank you very much. For, You're welcome. So, so Rachel, what's next for you? What's next? Well, I have to write a book. So I have to get onto that very promptly. And a chapter a month, and it should be sorted out pretty fast. We're looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, yeah. And uh, Rach, what, what do you do for you to recharge your tank? You know, obviously you're giving so much of your time and, and so you're always giving all the time. What do you do for you so you can feel alive and be right. in that creative zone? So I, um, I like to spend a lot of time alone. I, I'm a bit of an introvert. I like to spend time at home with my little tarot cards or my... Um, my crystals and I, I like to meditate but when I wake up in the morning there's a couple of things I always do and the face ever wants to do face exercises believe me takes 10 years off your life I mean off your face not your life <laughs> <laughs> it works Rachel thank you thank you so much for joining us here in the You're studio welcome. however look just before you go we have a challenge that we have for every single one of our guests that come on and it's the 10 question in 60 second challenge. Oh. So Rachel Thompson, do you accept the challenge? Yes. All right, now favorite color? Blue. Favorite food? Brown rice. Really? No, but I can't <laughs> think of anything else. <laughs> favorite celebrity? Lady Gaga. Oh yes, favorite actor? Hmm. Oh, v Viggo Mortensen. Yeah, I'm, I love him. Great. Favorite professional speaker? Amanda Gore. Oh, she's amazing. Favorite book? Oh, it's the guy that men love, and he's written the twelve step. He's the one that really about pay parity between men and women. Who is it, Leonard? Or do you know who I'm, I'm talking sure. about? No, no. His book's on my piano, and I can't think of it. His name. I was what's someone, the book called? It's the 12, it's 12 principles to, to success or something like that. But he's very, very popular right now. Sorry. That's right. Favourite <laughs> movie? Oh, oh Bohemian Rhapsody. Favourite city? Sydney. Favourite drink? Uh, a mojito. Mojito. <laughs> Favourite pizza topping? Uh, meat lovers. Oh, yes, I love it. I'm not very good with a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> and Rachel Thompson, if you could be a animal, which animal would you be? A deer. Why a deer? Because it's very strong, but it's very graceful. Mm, I love it. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us here it's on the Celebrity show. Authority Show. Next to next speaker is a true inspiration. He stands taller than most of us because of his enthusiasm and his big heart. He will share with you today his story of triumph through adversity, which in turn helped his vision come to light. He wants his story to inspire you to stand tall because unless you stand tall, your vision Will not. Should you please welcome to the stage, bringing his big vision all the way with him, Kwa Nam Tram. <laughs> Thank you for your applause. I got told to break a leg for good luck. 
I guess my luck never runs out. <laughs> Besides this smile, you might be wondering. I was involved in an accident, but let's put that aside for now. Vision. Having clarity for your vision will see it come to fruition if you're persistent. To be persistent, you must stand tall through adversity, which unfortunately accompanies success. Research from the World Health Organization shows that over 300 million people globally of all ages suffer from depression. Further studies reveal that in 2017, over 11 million adults in the United States would have had at least one major depressive episode. You can prevail over depression if you learnt how to stand tall. And if you learnt how to overcome adversity, then your vision will follow through. So begs the question, have you ever wanted to learn how to stand tall in the tough situations? Maybe you're going through a relationship breakdown. Or maybe you're having a tough time at work. Or maybe just lots of stress and anxiety from pursuing your vision. Have you ever really wanted to learn how to stand tall in those situations with confidence, certainty and clarity? I sure have. Born to immigrant parents, I was just like any other child back in the 90s. I loved to go outside and play with my friends. We would bike ride to the corner store to buy a lolly or two. We would also play games from handballs to marbles to even riding into the sunset. As I reached adulthood, my sense of adventure went up a notch or two. Bike riding to the corner store turned into mountain bike riding into the wilderness, tackling those steep rocky climbs, knowing that with every stride I take, I'll reach to the top. I would have given up so many times due to the lactic acid buildup, but as the saying goes, no, no With that motto in mind, I loved going to the gym. For repetition, it gave me that euphoric feeling of strength and power. But I'd lie if I said it didn't come with any caveats. I loved alcohol. That social bonding you get when you're all drunk, it made me feel included. I would drink almost every weekend just to get legless. It was my life. If I had a bender the night before, eating junk food by doing some sort of physical act exercise. Don't worry, I'm still guilty of that too. <laughs> December 2012, heading to a nightclub for a party where drinks were all abundant. The music was pumping, the energy was high, I was having the time of my life. A vodka here, a gin there, another whiskey here, another cab sav there. Eyes to a white ceiling. I see my mother and brother. <laughs> I remember asking. They looked at me with tears in their eyes. Qua. You've still heavily. I shrugged. So the car accident had dawned upon me.
150 kilometers head on collision into a telegraph pole, claiming the life of the front passenger, 18 year old Marsha. My friend, Jin, who was also the driver, suffered severe head injuries. The thought of having no legs didn't really hit me till a couple days later while in ICU. Wanted to use the bathroom, I shuffled to the side of the raised bed and <coughs> I was now on the ground. The nurses ran in and said, what are you doing? I wanted to use the bathroom, but you can't. To which I replied, I think I know that now. <laughs> that was the light bulb moment. I really did lose my legs. Have you ever felt a moment in your life where you wish you could go back? This is a dream, this is a nightmare, I'm going to wake up! Have you ever felt a moment where you did not want to accept this reality? Well, that's exactly how I felt lying there in the hospital bed. I felt defeated. What happens when you fall deep into a dark hole? You climb out of it. I knew that life wasn't going to wait for me, so why would I prevent myself from living life to the fullest? As I laid there, I already started looking at the brighter side of being legless, literally. My feet won't stink, shoe size won't be an issue, I won't get cold feet. You know when you accidentally wear shorts on a cold windy day only to regret it? not an issue for me anymore. My vision of being here on stage would not have happened if I didn't have the right positive mindset to stand tall. But what does these two titanium sticks mean for you? I will share three key points that you can apply to your everyday lives through what I've learned in my life's biggest challenges. Accept quickly. Time we cannot reverse, so why dwell on the past? Accept that now is reality. When I realized my life would be so different, I just had to accept it. I did not want to waste time on the what ifs. Should have, could have, would have. Instead, I put all my energy into the I will. I will live again. I will drive again. I will smile again. Number two, forgive easily. I had a choice. Did I want to hold on to the resentment for my friend's actions, drink driving? No. I went to visit him at the nursing home. He sat there, brain damaged, a shell of the human he used to be, and I forgave him. This is still my friend, and we were in this together. Amend your wounds by forgiving, so your minds will be at peace. And the third one is this, it's be physically fit. I must say, being fit is one of the reasons why I'm still here today. Days of mountain bike riding are far left behind, but since getting my legs, my energy expenditure has been well over 200%. 200% more energy consumed compared to an able bodied person. Before getting my transport was a wheelchair, but that didn't stop me from doing what I need to do. But boy, wheeling that thing around surely did my biceps triceps and smile. <laughs> Jokes, this smile never left me. Oh, and one cool thing about my legs, I'm taller than before. <laughs> so when you're going on a journey of tough times, accept quickly, forgive easily, and be physically fit. Because we'll be faced with a choice. Do we hold on to the past? Do we hold on to the unforgiveness? And do we be lazy? 
Or do we make that choice every single day to stand tall so our vision can blossom? Kwa Nam Tran. Hi guys, Sam Cawthon here, CEO and founder of Speakers Tribe, and I'm super excited about this video. This curriculum video here is all around participate. You know, I believe some of the greatest keynoters on the planet, particular trainers and facilitators as well, not only do they know how to articulate really effectively, but they also they know how to facilitate participation. You know, I've been in so many events where I've been up on stage and the audience is very cold. They don't know who I am, they're very skeptical, they're leaning back in their chairs and literally they're about to take their phones out because they're already bored, even before I get up on stage. So really the reality is, as professional speakers, as influencers, what we really need to do is grab their attention instantly. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the three ways in how to grab their attention and not only that, for get them involved so they're leaning forward, so they're participating, so they're taking part of activities, etc. as well. And that way, from there, I'm actually then going to share with you three hacks that you can really start talking, thinking about it, whether you wanted them to participate in short bursts, such as five to 20 seconds, if you want to get them to participate in medium bursts, such as one to three minutes, or even longer bursts, such as uh, five minutes, even up to 20, 45 minutes thereabouts, in activities that itself as well. So the reality is that my general rule of thumb is this, is that if you are speaking for over 40 minutes, then you do need an activity. I'll say that again, if you are speaking for over four minutes, 40 minutes, you do need an activity. So then that means then, if, if you are doing training or keynoting over 40 minutes, what activities can you do? There's a few rules around this. The first one is this, is lead by example. Now my encouragement to you, if you haven't already, get your pens and paper out, even your phones out, your notes, and write some of this down, yeah? Number one is lead by example. And what we mean by that is, what do you need to do to actually lead by example when you're on stage? You know, it super frustrates me when I see speakers up on stage, they ask for the audience participation, such as put their hand up, but they don't put up their hand themselves. So I believe if you lead from example, then obviously then your audience will then follow suit. So if you want the audience to lean in, you lean in. If you want the audience to participate, you participate. If you want the audience to put their hand up or, or, or do an actual action or whatever it is, you must lead by example. And the reality is that they will always do around 70% energy of what you do. So for example, if you do this, your audience will do this. If you do this, they'll do this. If you do this, they'll do that. If the, you do that, they'll literally just go like that. So my encouragement to you is, but would number one be always this, lead by example when it does come to every, any level of participation and interaction. The second thing is this, is framing. You know, I remember this one time where I was speaking in a, in a jail and it, was, um, and it was one of the major jails down there in Tasmania. And one of the most fascinating things is that when you get up there, they don't wanna be there. Um, and in most cases, they're talking with each other and they're big built and it's, it's quite intimidating to say the least. And the last thing you, you would believe is that if you're speaking for 90 minutes and you think, how can these people here participate here? How can we get them involved? How can we get them to do an activity? And it was certainly very, very difficult. So number two here is all about framing. What I needed to do in that particular situation, I needed to frame the importance of why participate. And not only that, I needed to frame that the people that do participate, these are the people that are brave, that are courageous. These are the people that aren't worrying about what other people think. These are the people here that actually really want to get something out of this, want to learn, want to grow. So in most cases, if I frame it in a way that if you don't participate, then you're scared about what other people think of you. If you don't participate, then you're not brave, then you're not courageous. If you don't participate, then you don't want to learn, you don't want to grow. Then suddenly now the audience, in a way, are feeling a bit guilty if they don't participate. Now, this certainly isn't a guilt thing as such, 
but it certainly is a really great sh um, strategy in order to get your audience to participate where they can. And then the third one is this, identify. And what we mean by that is ultimately, if you want your audience to participate, you need to identify what type of audience it is. Ultimately, if I'm speaking to a bunch of young teenagers, uh, then I'm gonna identify, great, these here, they want high level, they, they want high energy, they want to clap, jump on their feet, high five, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas if I'm, if I'm identifying that I'm speaking in front of a group of CEOs and executives, then these people here are not that prone to jump up on their feet and high five and yell and scream, etc. So really what I need to do is I need to identify exactly which audience that I'm in and that way then I can identify exactly what level of participation that I can expect from that audience. So my encouragement to you is lead from example, frame, how you need to get them engaged and ultimately then identify what do you need to do to understand who is in your audience and what level of activity or participation would they be more comfortable in doing. You know, uh, one of my keynotes, in my Bounce Forward keynote, I get up and I play the guitar and then at the end of me playing the guitar with only one arm, it's, it's pretty cool, but then I actually then get everyone up on their feet and sing with me. And I remember in most corporate audience, I've, um, I've, you know, I've led from example. So obviously I sing first and then my audience sing. I then frame to the audience, hey, look, now you're about to jump up on your, on, on your feet and sing. And this is all about a breakthrough in your own life. And then obviously, you know, I've identified exactly that this is going to be the right audience. But I once did it in front of a group of CEOs and executives and it did not go down very well at all. I saw half of the room stand up, I saw one or two people sing and that was about it and everyone else felt really uncomfortable. Thus, I also then felt uncomfortable as well. All right, so this, then this brings me to my second element in today's uh, uh, masterclass here, All On Participate, and it was all around what exactly are the best activities. So I've broken this down into three elements. One is the short, five to 20 seconds. The second one is the medium, one to three minutes. And then the third one here is a long three to 30 minutes plus. Uh, so I'm gonna unpack all of these as we go along. So the first one here is short, five to 20 seconds. My encouragement to you would be, at, would be to do a short one at least every 20 minutes up to 40 minutes max. And what a short one is could be something like, you know, um, hands up if, or has, um, nod your head if this has happened to you, or turn to the person and um, give them a high five, or, you know, or um, look around the room and search for this color, or whatever it is, yeah? So that there's a really, really quick one. So, you know, hands up, or has this ever happened to you, nod your head if this has, or whatever it is, or look at the person next to you and repeat after me, or whatever, yeah? So they're really short exercises, and my encouragement to you would be to get your audience to, um, participate in those in at least every 20 minutes if you're doing a 60 minute keynote. And one of the main reasons is it keeps them awake, keeps them uh, alert. If you're talking for longer than 20 seconds and there's zero interaction, there's zero throwing back to the audience and what is there with them, then ultimately they're gonna fall asleep no matter how motivational you might be or they'll just simply switch off. So that's the first thing. Second thing is this medium, one to three minutes. So this is where it is more of an exercise like, okay, stand up and go and high five th three people. Or it could be something like, you know, uh, um, stand up if this has ever happened to you or whatever it might be. Or another one could be something like, turn to the person next to you and ask them this question, bang, bang, bang. I'll give you 90 seconds, yeah? So that is really, really good quick one. Or the other thing is this, is, I, I, is look around the room and search for anything at all or what, what is, or look under your chair and see if you can find. So these are really short ones that, you know, might require just simply standing up or sitting down, talking to the person next to you, but it certainly isn't standing up and walking away from your seat. Because ultimately, no matter how uh, big or small your room is, once you get them to stand up and walk away from their seat, it will take a long time for you to calm them back down, get them back to their seat, sit them back down, grab the energy back in your control and then start speaking again. So this is still only a medium uh, activity here. Uh, I've got a few ones here where I actually get everyone to stand up, 
everyone turn towards the uh, window or everyone turn towards one side, put both your hands up in the air very slowly, bring your hands down and just start massaging the shoulders in, the front of, in front of you. And that particular exercise works really, really well. Most of you guys that have seen me speak, I would have done high five the person next to you. Or alternatively, for those people that have actually come along to boot camp, we did an exercise where we get where we went one, one, two, one, one, two, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. You know what I'm talking about. So they're always fun as well. And then the other one was obviously your power moves. So you stand up and do your power moves, yeah? So they're the, they're the medium ones. And now the long ones here, uh, so this is anywhere between five to 30 minutes. So some really great long exercises that you can get your audience to participate in can be some warm-ups of the room. So what we do in a lot of our boot camps, it's about talking to the person next to you, uh, interview them, and then come up on stage, then actually um, share with the other person that you've just met. Or alternatively, another exercise is go and find someone that actually is the same birthday month as you. Or alternatively, go and find someone who's got the same surname, last letter in, you know, a, as yours or whatever. So there's a lot of other, um, so a lot of these activities here could either be group work or could be working in partnership or could be to go and find something, yeah? So these are some great activities here. However, again, it is all about those first three elements. Lead by example. You must lead from example. So even if you want to show to the audience how this is done, you bring up an audience member and say, guys, this is how it works. Bang, 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 bang. Did you get that? Let's try again. Come up here on stage, bang, bang. So you lead from example. The second one here is framing. So framing is all specifically around what do you need to do to frame this exercise in a way that it's very, very, very clear to them. It's so clear. So sometimes I would literally go, so guys, what I want you to do right now, I want you to get your phone and I want you to turn it on. That's right, turn it on, unlock it, whatever it is. Now I want you to find, find your Facebook app. So just go, you know, everyone knows what the Facebook app looks like. So you just find your Facebook app. Now go into your Facebook app. Now right up the top there, there is a search bar. What I'd like for you to type in there is speakers tribe. That's right, and this is how you spell it, S-P-E-A-K. E-R-S space tribe, T-R-I-B-E, speakers, tribe, and then global, G-L-O-B, etc., etc. So this way I'm literally teaching them how to do it. And then I then say, now like that page. Now how you like the page, it's just there on the, uh, on the top, a little bit to the side, just simply like that. That is a great way how we can stay in contact with you. Instead of me saying something like, so guys, what I want everyone to do, go onto Facebook and go onto uh, our page and just like the page. They're not gonna do it. They will not do it. So my greatest encouragement to you would be lead by example, always frame the actual activity, explain absolute detail, and ultimately really identify who is your market and make sure you're communicating in their language. Guys, I really hope that today's curriculum video really gave you value. And please, my encouragement to you would be to go out there and actually try it out because you're not going to learn anything unless you actually don't implement something like this. So go out there and implement it where you can. For those people that are actually joining Speakers Tribe for the very first time, I wanted to say welcome. It is great to see you. For those leaders that are here in the room, I wanted to say thank you so much for leading your awesome tribe. You're doing an outstanding job. And also, for those people that haven't registered into Speakers Tribe Conference, my encouragement to you is to, is to lean into this proximity. See what you need to do to say, hey, look, I want to be a part of this movement. We believe that we are the incubator for the next generation of influencers in this world. And ultimately here at Speakers Tribe, we're all about helping you make a difference in the world. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what's possible in the next chapter with you once you lean into Speakers Tribe. And as always, don't forget, the best is yet to come. I'll see you soon. had this little tiny idea that there was something else that I wanted to be doing, something that I could give back to help young people. 
and really it was leveraging my experience mentoring people through my career and also based on some research I'd done around opportunities in the graduate space. But I didn't really know what to do, I didn't know how to get started and I think most importantly what I didn't have was the confidence in myself and the certainty in my ability to actually execute this, to leave a safe corporate role and go off on my own. And through the program, that was really the benefit that I experienced, that whole expanding on the idea, being challenged about how the idea was being executed and actually taking it from this tiny little seed to what is now a full business plan that I'm currently executing. The feeling now is so much different. Every day I'm living my purpose. When a student looks me in the eye and says something like, that was genius, I would never have thought of that. I feel so much better about myself. I know that I'm truly making a difference and I feel really fulfilled. So instead of feeling stressed and drained at the end of the week, I'm tired, but I'm also so fulfilled and I'm excited about what's next to come. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in for today's episode here at Speakers TV. My name is Sam Cawthorn and we are super excited about Speakers TV and about these episodes that we bring to you every single weekday as well as also on every single Saturday. Guys, we'd love to hear from you. If you've got any feedback at all for us, or maybe you want to comment right down, right now in the chat bar about what was your biggest takeaway from today's uh, session. But also not only that, why don't you join us? So here at Speakers Institute, we do have a number of programs such as our online boot camps or our protege program at Speakers Tribe here. We're all about running these big, large annual conferences every year, but also not only that, there is an annual membership that you can get where in your city, we do have tribe gatherings, all really encouraging you going from where you are today to where you really wanna be. Or maybe you wanna tell your friends and your family about Speakers TV, but can I please encourage you, why don't you like like this page? Why don't you join us each day? Why don't you tell other people about these episodes? Because we are all about really helping you on this journey to becoming that recognized voice of authority for you to find your message and your story and get that out there into the world. We are super excited about your journey. So please lean in and join us today. To your success, my name is Sam Cawthorn. And don't forget, the best is yet to come.